All right, so let's continue on into our fill-in-the-blank templates. So as you can see here, we can, we can take our data and draw a chart or draw a histogram or draw whatever. But we can also do that with our fill-in-the-blank templates. So in Excel uh, 2007, it's going to be over here under the fill-in-the-blank templates. We have SPC charts and improvement tools like fishbone diagrams, lean tools like value stream mapping. Uh, we have crazy stuff like gauge R&R &R and failure modes and effects analysis, uh, planning tools. Uh, we find there's a lot of planning tools out here. There's project management tools like work breakdown structures and so on. You'll notice there's a, just a truckload full of things out here, forms that are common to the Lean and Six Sigma process. Now, we could actually take the SPC charts and say, well, gee, what I'd really like is an X bar R chart, and I just want to be able to drop my data in here. And so literally, when you start dropping your data into these sheets, it will automatically go out and start drawing your chart. So I'm going to copy this data, and I'm going to paste that data in here. And as it thinks, you can see it's going to put up my whole chart here. As we scroll over, if I put in my spec limits here, 23.5 and 21 point, whoops, mushed that one up, didn't I? Twenty one point five. It'll actually draw my histogram and it'll also show the uh, the normal probability plot for this data. Now the great thing about this is if you are uh, in a situation where you're you need to track things like this, then it makes it pretty easy. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go get a SPC chart. For those of you in healthcare, a G chart is one of the more common uh, things that, that you want to track, and that's like never events, the days or units between events. And so you can just come in here and say, well, the next time that we had a, uh, uh, let's see, let's say it's days between uh, retained foreign objects or something like that. Well, you just come in and start putting in your new, new numbers, so maybe the next one's 11, uh, 15, slash, 2009, well, it's going to start adding your data in. And all of these, these fill-in-the-blank templates have an instruction sheet on them. And then there's a couple of different kinds of uh, charts down here at the bottom. So this one uses a median. This one's using the average as a center line. This way you can start to find, uh, you know, whatever kind of chart you want and start to draw it. Now we could also come in here and, if we wanted to, uh, grab an SPC chart, an XMR chart. So there's some tools in here like a standard XMR chart. If you want to show a process change at a row, you could do that. Let's get back over here to our healthcare data. I could take this data here and copy that and slip back over here and uh, paste that in there. Oh, of course, you're going to hiccup, aren't you? Because I need to paste special. That's actually values. There we go. It won't let me paste in formulas that circularly rotate here. So here's our chart. And so we can start to see the changes here. And it has the ability to show a process change at a row. So I'm not sure. I think that's probably row 24 or something like that. Yeah. And so you can show process changes. Um, there's also things down here for rolling. So if you want to have 24 months or 48 months of rolling data and just keep adding to your spreadsheet as you go on, you can use that tool. So we have a lots of different kinds, and you can fix, a f fix your limits. There's short run charts. Uh, I don't make a macro for those because it's kind of rare for a lot of people to use those. So all of these fill-in-the-blank templates are kind of like little power tools. You can just start putting your numbers in and keep track of it. You don't have to rerun the chart every month. You can just add data to it, to a, a worksheet. Or you can actually go in and, and add data to your worksheet as well. So in the QI macros, we also have the ability, so if we wanted to, I could just add some data down here, and maybe it's 3.9 and 2.7 
and 3.6 or something like that. Now, literally, I could come in here and say, I want to add uh, data to my control chart once I've created one, and I want to add three rows, and it'll add the next three data points to my chart. So we can do that as well. This is the sort of thing that you can do. You know, just keep being flexible and having fun with it. So those are, those are a lot of different ways we can draw charts, and you will find that there are just a truckload full of um, different kinds of charts in here. We also have improvement tools, so if you want a fishbone diagram, uh, it's just going to pull up a fill-in-the-blank kind of fishbone diagram that you can modify to your heart's content. A lot of people don't know that Excel will do this kind of stuff. And so even if we go over to Excel 2010, you could find the fishbone diagram in here, or uh, if you need failure modes and effects analysis, there's actually so many different styles of, of failure modes and effects analysis. I created one for all of them. Uh, so there's a lot of these kinds of tools in here, so templates to fill things in. And we can actually come in here if you need a value stream map. You'll find that I have templates in here for the value stream map as well. And you can literally just uh, copy one of these things and then take it and go over to uh, another sheet and paste that in there. And it'll stick it in here, and we can move that around, connect it to things. So these are the kinds of things where you can then come in and adjust and modify and tweak to your heart's content. All right. Um, and we have other things in here. There's um, the A3 report from Toyota. That's a short, shorthand kind of problem-solving thing. Uh, lots of tools hiding out in the fill-in-the-blank templates.